Hello, Randall Monk here. I'm here with my dear friend, Rana Herman Vizane, and uh, we're going to talk today about her experiences as a messenger for Archangel Michael. And uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay. So Rana, let's, uh, why don't we start, if it's okay with you, with Triton. I know Triton came to you first, right? Yes, that was, um, I had, a little indication before when I tried automatic writing and and uh, I just I it, it came automatically like some some guides and mm -hmm. so that kind of got me started um, mm -hmm. investigating and doing a little bit more study mm -hmm. but um, after we retired uh, me as a real estate broker and my husband as an, an executive with the airlines uh, we moved up into the foothills of the Laguna Mountains and um, we started a Christmas tree farm, I, I, um, trees in containers, and everything was wonderful. We had uh, our life was great. We belonged to country clubs. We had a lot of social interaction and so on. But um, I began to have a divine discontent, and that was in the early '80s, where a lot of people began to waken up. And so I started meditating every morning, and I got oh, I could go through a bunch of the difference. And I mean, I would shake, I would vibrate. I got a lot of you know, different, when I was meditating, dark things, and I didn't have anybody to talk with. But this went on for almost two years. And can, I, I, can I ask you a quick question? Yes. How, how old would you say you were at that point? Um, so, if that was... <clears throat> approximately. Oh, okay, uh, let's say, yeah. Uh, like 60s? That, I was in my 60s. I yeah. Was, yeah, yeah, I was... Uh, Probably 62, 63, oh, okay. somewhere, somewhere okay. around. No, no, it would be about 60, good, yeah, yeah. right around my 60s. Okay. And, uh, but I had, I had begun some study earlier, but we still had, I still had a lot of playing and a lot of, you know, traveling to do after having a, a pretty rough life. And so uh, I didn't really get into it until we retired. And so uh, I was studying, as I say, I was reading everything I could find, and we started a group of 12 ladies, and each one had to take a turn to more or less facilitate the classes. And uh, I can remember when one, um, she brought a book about angels, and uh, in, in the church I went to, there wasn't, didn't talk much about angels, mostly hell and damn fire and the devil, you know, <laughs> the, 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 all the negatives and, you know, fear God. And so the one that I chose was Archangel Michael. And that was kind of the first, you know, we talked a little bit about it, but I didn't think too much about it. Well, along the way, uh, I began to have some health problems and uh, I, I had bronchial pneumonia back then. I got a really bad case of bronchial pneumonia and my back started bothering me. And I'm thinking, you know, here, I'm studying and I, you know, what's happening to me? And it was kind of a dark night of the soul because it was just all within me because everything was fine. Beautiful home, um, not wealthy, but comfortable. And my husband, our relationship was great. And so in particular, uh, I was doing some, I did yoga. I practiced yoga then, so I was doing some yoga stretches. And I uh, just kind of lay down on, on the uh, floor in, in our family room and I'm, just kind of, in fact, the tears were kind of streaming out of my eyes. You know, I, I just felt so helpless and, and, and just confused. And it was almost like a symbolic gesture. It was like, I said, symbolically, just lifted my soul up and says, here, God, you take it. I don't know what to do with it. Well, literally, a voice boomed into my head. Well, it's about time. We've been waiting for you to get your ego out of the way so we can begin to work with you. I am called my I am called Triton and he, he T R I T O N and I am to be your teacher if you are willing and uh, you have you have agreed to be a messenger for the new wisdom that is coming forth for this age that is coming and so on and so on and uh, it was a big shock to me it was really a big shock but from that time on we and I said we had these Christmas trees. We were raising in in containers. There were Monterey pines, and I I had to go out and pick off the and to form it because you couldn't cut it because it would leave it make it dark. So I'm out there with a little little 
a recorder that my husband had in his, uh, in his when he traveled. And uh, I'm asking all these questions and I'm getting answers uh, about my past life, the painful times with my father and my ex-husband. And it just all of this, it was just amazing. And this went on for quite a long time. And I began then to channel uh, with the group. And uh, I later learned, much later, that what had happened, Triton was the uh, oversight, of the higher self in the causal body. And because I had been chosen for this, he sent down, and I, it wasn't masculine, but it felt masculine. So he sent down a memory seed atom into my sacred mind, which activated a memory seed atom there. And I sent one back in agreement and I became an instant cosmic telepath. And what Michael tells me now is that you all have, we all have that ability, maybe not to be a worldwide, you know, out, out in the public and so on, but it is there and we do have that ability. And the same thing happened then after uh, I trained with Michael for several, you know, with Triton. And then when Michael came, it was another memory seed atom that Michael activated as I had lifted my energy and balanced and harmonized enough so that I could begin to get the uh, teachings or the oh. frequencies from Michael. And how many years would you say that was or what? I started in the 80s. Uh, it was about 82, 83, and then in 92, and, and I was out there. I was, so it was about 10 years before yeah, Michael came through that you were working with Triton? Yeah, mm. yeah, I think it was 86 when Triton came in. Mm. And, so, and then the harmonic convergence, 87, you know? Oh, yeah. And so, and so, and so then when, uh, uh, it, it, it was, it was time, it was time. Mm -hmm. and, and I did go through a lot during that time, you know, a lot of changes and everything, but, and then one thing was, the magic was, um, one morning when I was walking across our beautiful yard to go, it was in the foothills, the lagunas, and we had an acre, an acre and a half, and I was going up to uh, trim Christmas trees, and he says, you will write a book, and it will be called Once Upon a New Will, Will, Once Upon a New World. And I said, oh, no, I won't, because I wasn't <laughs> very old, comfortable with my education. And, uh, but uh, from that time on, uh, I was sitting in my chair in the evening while my husband was watching TV. I had been a secretary, sit there and write in shorthand, and it came just as fast as I could write it, and then I'd transcribe it the next day. And that's what, uh, three chapters, I mean, three books that ended up coming out, 800 and some pages of my past lives. And that's your trilogy? That's my trilogy. Well, and I, I will say, if, for anybody who has read Rana's work and uh, channelings from Michael, that that those that trilogy is totally different. It's 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 it doesn't. It's just not the same writing. It's a whole different form of uh, writing. It's like it's like it's coming from a different author than the Michael's messages. And I certainly don't write. I mean, it, it, it captures you. It draws you in it. There's there's energy in it. Of, of description and so on, you know, that's very touching. And, oh yeah, it's, uh, it'd make a wonderful movie. Yes, it would. Make, wouldn't yeah. it make a wonderful or series? series? Or series, yes, 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 yeah. yes. A little too long, probably yeah. for a movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and then I will say one more thing. After after Michael came and and I had, um, um, I don't know if I published the trilogy there or not. I think it was just out in the, in the, in the spiral bound form. Mm -hmm. And he, he wanted me to begin to write a book. And I said, well, what about the trilogy? And it hasn't been out there the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> and he said, well, let me tell you this way, beloved. First of all, it was a test. We wanted to see if you had the tenacity to stick with it. And we wanted to, you to understand and believe that you could write. And next, your ego was quite tied to that material, and so <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if, if it had been a great success, then you wouldn't have gone on to do the, the work that you're intended oh, to do. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense, huh? <laughs> so. so funny. Um, so can you talk a little bit about the maybe how the experience changed over the years with Michael and what like when you when you bring him in has it has that always been the same pretty much no or? no and what I understood first the first messages he 
gone through Triton, you know, he, they came through him until I gradually could uh, begin to lift my frequencies. And uh, it's always been, um, he would come in in different levels. I mean, since that time, I've been able to get information from him. And, you know, it's that's why I like it quiet. And, mm -hmm. and uh, because I'm always attuned. But um, as you've experienced with me, uh, he gradually ramped up the energy. So when I would have a seminar, I would be, he would begin to download the frequencies the night before. Mm -hmm. And by the time I would be ready to get there, as you've, you've seen me, I would begin to perspire inten mm -hmm. intensely. Mm -hmm. And I would feel like I had a, a red hot poker up my spine mm -hmm. and my skin would be ice cold. Mm -hmm. And uh, that continued as time went on, uh, mostly, mostly only when he came in in full force because the everyday, the everyday interactions, I'm more aware, whereas when I am on stage, I move my consciousness to the side, and I'm not a trance channel, I hear and everything, but it's, I really don't get that, I, mean, I don't really know what's said until I listen to it. Yeah. You, you, don't know, listen, I, you don't remember much of it. I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, if yeah, it's yeah. something really unusual, I'll kind of get a, oh, you know, yeah. but it's not, not a trance channel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I, he has had the differences with the trans channel, they will send down frequencies into the body that the body has not accommodated. Mm. With me. And they're totally out of the picture. And they're totally out of the picture. Yeah, they, they, and it, it's hard on the body. They take over them. Yeah, it does. It is hard, it on, is the hard on the body. Yes. With this, I have had, and he <clears> told me, he said, you are, I will move you into my auric field and it's like their levels of the auric field. You will be in my auric field, and as you gradually move, you know, as your frequencies lift, you will gradually move in closer. So, when Triton came to the point, there came a point, he said, um, You have integrated my energy, we are as one. In other words, I had integrated the energy from that level, mm -hmm. from that causal plane, and there will be a being of greater light coming to you. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. was then in February of 1992. That's when Archangel Michael came in. And so that was a whole day. And I miss Triton because he's my mm -hmm. buddy. You know, yeah, yeah. I'd talk and he'd tell, you know, I'd, I mean, I'd hear mm -hmm. and I'd ask a question in my mind and I'd get the answer. And I really miss my buddy, you know? Yeah. yeah. But, and uh, also along the way, um, Paul Cool, who was an aspect of Confucius, and he was a Tibetan, and he wrote some beautiful books of which I studied a lot. Mm -hmm. And he was my mentor. In fact, I am of that lineage, that same lineage with Dual Cool and with Confucius. Mm -hmm. And I've been told that I've had more lives in the Eastern world than uh, in the Western world because uh, just, I think, as, as I've told you, you have, mm -hmm. because we're a bridge. Yeah, we're a bridge yeah. from, the, for, from the contemplative, inward focused, intuitive to the outward focus, the action. Mm. The action and and uh, like I said, you've got to come down off the mountain and walk walk, walk among the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, and so now uh, again, uh, he's there all the time. I just have to shift my consciousness. And mm -hmm. if I were to channel with a, a, a group, it would he would come in more. Mm -hmm. But it is it is somewhat different as time has progressed. And do you find? I know I do when I channel. If I'm doing something by myself, the energy is there and I feel the energy, but if there's a group, it's like magnified uh, exponentially. Oh, oh, tremendously. And yeah. that's why the people that have seen me, when I'm in a big group, he takes off my glasses mm -hmm. because he loves to scan. He likes to scan mm -hmm. the group and mm -hmm. everybody feels it. You know, mm -hmm. Everybody feels like he's looking directly at them. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Well, anything else you'd like to add about uh, your experiences with uh, as a messenger for Michael? Well, um, I will say that at, we're in such an accelerated time of transformation and people are really feeling it, just like, you know, with the COVID and all these things that are happening. Um, it's, we are mutating, we mm -hmm. are mutating. Yes. And I know it's very difficult, but if you can just stay in that center, it's it's all it's all if we can see it as a part of the process. And uh, I know for us, you know, mm -hmm. we we are, have created 
a fifth dimensional hologram. Mm -hmm. And even though I have tests and I have, you know, things that, you know, still things, we will as long as we're here. Mm -hmm. We're blissful. Yes, yes. It's every day is magical. We go around with a stupid <laughs> smile on our face. You know? <laughs> and they wonder, what the, <laughs> do you have some secret or something? <laughs> but just like with Amy, my granddaughter coming to live with me, and she's she's on a fast track, and it is just so beautiful. And just like our relationship, you mm -hmm. know, in our soul family, there's nothing like it. There, it, mm -hmm. it is just so wonderful. And I would say to everybody, whatever, it, it, one of the most th important things is that's why, you know, don't you don't be on your phone all the time. Don't have all that background. You've got to learn to be content with your own silence and your own sanctuary. Meditation has a number of layers. Mm -hmm. We're in a living meditation. Mm -hmm. We have become a living meditation. I don't sit and meditate for an hour or half hour anymore in the morning and the evening in quiet times and I go into that space and I do some breathing but it's just there all the time and also controlling your mind you know mm. your monkey mind and that, emotions oh, and the emotions yeah. that ego that ego mind and all those things like I hear a lot of people say if I could just forget about the bad relationship if I could just get over this if I could just forget it well that's what's so wonderful we turn on, turn into your own radio station and listen to what is going on in there. And the discipline is to quiet your mind and begin to get into that alpha state so that you are, what is happening is you are gradually balancing and harmonizing this, what we call, what Michael calls the animal human nature, the subconscious mind is gradually becoming conscious, you're gradually clearing up. You know, the subconscious is subjective and it takes everything literally. And so all of that is what all is all stirred up in there. Mm -hmm. And so you are you will every a lot of people, most everyone that we know, you think you're losing your mind because you start to say something, it's gone. Mm -hmm. Or the names or you know. Mm -hmm. Well, you know the reason for that? I told you, you that. know, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. That subconscious mind is becoming more conscious, and there are dimensional levels within the brain structure. And as you tap into the sacred mind, which is the higher fourth and fifth dimensional energy that we are reaching for, and so the more we balance and harmonize those lower frequencies, the harder they are to access the trivia. And so just we you couldn't tap into your sacred mind to bring in some of that intuitive information. It's reversed now. So no, you don't have old timers, Alzheimer's, dementia. It's part of the process. Mm. Yes. And so what is the goal? <clears throat> what is the goal for the average person to help the subconscious with all the thoughts, the affirmations, the breathing, all the things that we teach and have teach and taught for these last, what, 20 years. Yeah, a long time. There's a reason for it. It's disciplining the mind and the body. And don't forget that you have energy. You're the chakras. They're like seven different mind centers that are all or have all been functioning separately. So you've had all these battles going on within your body. Mm -hmm. And so these things have a reason. The more you integrate the higher frequency energy and have it flow through you, it's going to go into the bloodstream, the DNA, all the places it needs to be to gradually transmute, transform, and, and transcend the third, lower, the third and the lower fourth dimensional aspects of ourself so that we can then finish those last three levels of the fourth dimension and join with all those soul fragments. When you get to that mid-fourth dimension, where you've balanced and harmonized everything and you're drawing forth at least 1% positive energy, that's when the magic starts. Oh, yes. Because that's when we begin to connect. And we, we've done this on a, on a physical label. And the level with the others out there, we send those um, harmonized, the harmonized frequencies of our soul song. Mm -hmm. And it connects with a part of one of our soul, our fragments, our other mm -hmm. soul, part of our soul self. 
and we tra- exchange information. Yes. Mm-hmm. We do, you know how we get together mm-hmm. and you ask me a question or whatever, and all of a sudden we're getting different information or more than we had before. Mm-hmm. It's the same Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. And so that's when the magic starts, and that's when you really begin to get the results. The other, you know, it, it depends on the person. It depends on how dedicated you are, how much you want to do it, how what how much uh, what you say uh, the the garbage you have, it, you know, the negative things you have there to clear. But the process, the process works, mm-hmm. and you have to start somewhere. And mm-hmm. it's going to work faster now because we have we have available to us the new divine blueprint. The frequencies are higher and stronger and more insistent or more invasive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so it, it, like Michael said, there's no longer the status quo. You know, you're either going to go this way, or you're going. To, if if you aren't balanced and harmonized, if you cannot control your thoughts, you're going to end up taking in more of that. Horrible mass consciousness belief yeah. structure, the fear, the anger, the frustration, the chaos. It's horrible. Yeah, and spiraled downward. Yes, yes. yes. Mm-hmm. So I want to mention that uh, for anyone who's interested in learning more about connecting with beings of light like Archangel Michael or your higher self, that Rana has a book opening to channel, which you can find on starquestmastery.com www.starquestmastery.com and I have a series of uh, four modules teaching how to channel and to connect with beings of light and you can find that information on www.timelyguidance.com so thank you for your time much love and many blessings to you tap in there boy you've got a bunch of buddies waiting to talk to you we love you (laughs) bye 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 for now.